Hi everybody, welcome back. Um, so I'm still working on this um, body of work here. Um, I've just videoed myself doing a little bit. I'm uh, just doing a little bit each day and then um, drying that layer. Um, I'm either drying it with a hair dryer or I'm just leaving it to dry. Um, today I've just left it to dry. So I've gone in, I bought some nice gesso because I love using gesso as a white. It's it to me it's the most thickest, goodest white, you know, that there is. I enjoy painting with it when I want to bring light back into my pictures as you can see just here. So although I've put, I've gone over with some white, once that's dry, it's lightened that area so I can put another colour on top. And um so um if you use like um like really bold inks like i've got these like um this is a calligraphy in ink winsor and newton you can see the color of that that's beautiful so if i wanted to lighten up the picture i can add a little bit of black to this and it would make a lovely green which would be a lighter green that would put you know push it further back it will look it will make those white bits there look further back and and this is what it's all about it's layering up and um it's great fun um if you see a blanket on the floor there it's covering up some uh, down there it's covering up some papers cuz i didn't want them to get any paint on them cuz i'm painting um so yeah that's what i've been doing there and then i've gone along with some um some more calligraphy ink. This is a brown calligraphy ink. Well, it's it's sepia. Sepia is it sepia? I can't say it. Uh, S E P sepia. That's it. It's S E P I A. And this is a Winsor and Newton one as well. Um, I like working with inks as well as acrylics and watercolors. That's why I'm a mixed media artist because they all mix so well. They all do such different things. I think it's really important to to do do you know to do that um so yeah as you can see as i'm going along here i'll show you some close-ups properly soon uh with that i did some splatters and um and just put those in and went all the way along and i've just got to leave that i've got a stage where i've got to leave that to dry now and then like i said in this uh, de decide which color i want to put in there also i've got some old um these are my old um, black permanent marker, fine liner markers they are, that I used to use for my drawing, um, but they're getting a bit, you know, they get they hit and miss now. If I want to do a straight line, they hit and miss. Um, in my drawing, that's not so good, but for this, it's perfect. Hit and miss is good, um, because I don't want things to look the same when it's all abstract. And don't forget, these are like abstract of Red River, um, you know, with all the beautiful greens and the browns and everything and the colour. I wanted to capture the colours that I feel when I'm down there. And especially now spring's coming, all these greens are coming through. And all these beautiful bronzy browns that you would all automatically see in autumn but now in spring they're sort of dying things are dying off and and other things are coming through and it's beautiful so yeah these are my best ones that i use for uh, my drawing just another tip something that's nice i've started to do i've been going around to charity shops uh, for you americans and canadians and things the th there'll be thrift shops won't they and uh, or online thrift shops that you might have but this old clay part i got this from a charity shop from around here but it's immaculate and um it's an absolutely beautiful part and it's it's really really nice to put all your pens in and or brushes and things like that i'm going to get hubby to put me a really nice shelf up because i want to show them off what i've been collecting here's another nice pot look it's not a plant pot it's a clay pot that's not for plants it's it's lovely i love the i love the feel of that and um yeah and it's, they're just nice to collect i think this one was a plant pot but I like the colours on this one. It's like, and the, and I like the, because it's obviously been dipped and um, in colour and glazed, uh, but this is left rough. <coughs> Excuse me, and I like that. So it's nice to have all your nice bits and pieces on a nice shelf like that. So I'm going to start and collect them. I think it was, um, 
I saw um, Tracy um, um, who, who put, uh, she got like an old box and things and um, my old box, it, it's not, it's, it's, it's quite old now. I have had it about, I don't know, about 10 years, but you know, I'm looking for old boxes now just to put bits and bobs in to make those all look nice as well. So, um, yeah, think about all those sort of things um, for your studios and things. It makes you feel nice. The things that you've been out and collected, it's a bit like beachcombing, isn't it? You go out and pick pebbles up and things and sticks and twigs and things that you like and things like that. So, uh, yeah. So now I've got to leave those to dry. But I just thought um, while I was having a bit of a break, I would uh, come on here and show you what I've been doing. I am busy. Oh, and I've had a new puppy as well. Um um, his name, uh, her name is Jazz. So we've got our hands full with that. But I'm still, I'm still able to come up here in the evening and do my work. If my husband sat down in the lounge watching TV and she's having a snooze and all that, so yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, I keep coughing today. So um, it's still all fun, you know. You've got to, you've got to do these things and and get out of here and and uh, get into your studios and things. Also, uh, something else I've been working on. I thought I'd just come on and show you a few things that I've been doing. Um, while I've been doing my drawing, um, can you remember the old piece of paper um that I folded up as a concertina book, like because it was extra. This is what I mean, like how it builds up, look. Because look here, look, this has got all sorts of things on it now. It's got pens, it's got charcoal, it's got all sorts of things where, um, and ink and splatters and all sorts, and where I've been able to smudge. So eventually, say if there's any charcoal parts on it, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just fix them with some fixidant, and it's called fix, fixative rather, not fixidant. Fixidant's for your false teeth. <laughs> But fixident, <laughs> um, uh, but fixative is the one that you want. Uh, I always use Winsor and Newton just because it's easy to get hold of for me. But to spray it over any charcoal, it just seals it, and then I'm able to go over the top with a fine liner pen if I want to. So um, you can work on top of it then. Uh, yeah, and also when you spray it on it, it gives it like a it amalgamates it, and then other parts it separates it and makes it slightly. Um, resistant like I like I said to you in another video so but yeah so that's coming along there then still they're still blank look that was another bit look they were from they were from a pad you know just trying out a, a, a black ink pad uh, I'll just show you what I was doing with that I was trying to get it because the uh, draw on my drawing I want to be able to bring in some make it a bit more abstract and to fill in some large areas rather than just completely bricking it by drawing it. This is a large painting, so the areas are quite difficult to, to fill. So this is an old um, ink pad. Uh, there we are, that's what it is. You can get them online. They're just old things I've had lying about for ages. And you can just, you can just spread them like this and cut little marks like this. You can make little, you can draw with them in a line actually. Uh, you can broaden the line so it can be narrow and then you can broaden it, makes beautiful like leaf shapes. Yeah, I think that would be another video. Yeah, can you see? And um, so we're after the practicing the marks, but the marks that I actually wanted was not the outside marks there, it's that inside mark there. That's the one that I want on my building. And I did manage to get it sort of, but um, I tried it out a few times on some papers, but it's that inside, it's that inside mark that I'm after. And you've got to be able to get it just right. Not easy, not easy at all. So once I've filled that up, um, with all the different kinds of marks that I've been using and wiping my brushes on it and things like that. Look at that look already. And then that was that that tree that I did that I showed you look, just tried out some brown ink at the bottom. Can you see how this is starting to come into a concertina book now without even now even trying really? So while that ink is wet there that I've just done there, it should be able to just smudge onto here. To 
help create another page. I'm just rubbing it down now just to see. No, it didn't, but if I'd have done it straight away, it would have done. So, yeah, so I've got two pages in there to do. Look, that one there, just a little bit on there. And that was the uh, ball on the table when I was doing some uh, exercises with that, if you remember. So I always keep that on my drawing page and I, I like to wipe my pens on it, you see. Just the edge of the pen. So, um, because when you're drawing with these fine liners, they do get a little bit like bitty or knobbly a little bit sometimes. So it's good to literally just wipe, wipe the pen on it. And, you know, and you can do a little blind contour drawing and don't look at it. So, like, for instance, uh, maybe I could do, I might be, it might let me draw on here. So, say there's this uh, canyon in front of me. So, I might want to just draw it and, and, and not really look and, you know, and just see what marks come from that. And do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, without looking blind contour drawing, very good way of, uh, you know, um, practicing getting marks and interesting marks. And you think to yourself, oh, I, I felt that mark rather than looked at it. So, uh, yeah, very, um, very good to do. And collect all your twigs and your sticks, look, and then just wrap some, wrap, wrap some uh, string around them on the ends, look. And then you can dip them in your ink. These make lovely marks. So, in fact, one uh, one or two of them have uh, dropped off of that. So, just in, just dipping it in. Ink's good. And then, over the top of this, look. Straight away, look. Just by twisting it. And a different colour as well. It just makes a different kind of mark. Very difficult for me to show you like this that you get the idea it's very it's very fine and very delicate but it's there remember that quiet conversation in the background that we were talking about here we are look can you see that coming now look on the outsides of it so try all these things have a go you know, like when you're waiting for paint to dry or today I don't feel like drawing. Um, I'm not in the mood for drawing. I have to be very relaxed to be drawing. I feel a bit kind of like, I need to do a little bit of, you know, a little bit of this. Yeah. And so, and that's all that you need to be doing there. Also, you can uh, obviously dip it and do some splatters. And then already, when you're looking closer, look, look it's giving you some nice marks. And I, I'm not really doing anything. It's just playing about with things that you've got. Yeah. So leave that to dry now and uh, and so on. So let me just put the lid back on this ink because it is important. But I thought I'd come on and, and show you a few bits and bobs that I do while my paint's drying. And then, like I say, I should get back into this by putting in... Um, once it's dried by going over um, with a different colour. So obviously the black and white, so I'll probably leave those as they are. Um, can I just turn you around a little bit? Look there, look. You see, because they've come out really, really well. They they also almost look like trees now. And they weren't meant to be trees. They just was random marks. Um, so, yeah, so some of them down here now. Um will be starting to dry and then uh, like I say I should be coming back in with another colour uh, but not completely over the white that I've just made because remember I'm, I'm trying to create space I'm not just trying to create um, like too many layers that I'm going to lose the space in all again otherwise you, you just you know I'll end up with an inch thick of paint by just doing so many layers and so many layers um, so, uh, but yeah, I just thought I'd just come on and show you while I was resting in between and doing little bits and bobs. So, uh, anyway, um, I'll put some things on for you. Um, you can see me working a bit and some of the end results of some of the pictures so far. Remember, these are work in progress. And remember, these are my, um, beloved Red River. And, uh, you know, it's, 
the Red River itself, it's literally is just, a, it's almost like a small pond. And in winter, in summer, it dries up and goes away when we've not had any rain. But then when we do have rain, it comes back. But it always comes back. It used to have so many different names, Red River, the floods. But we used to play there as children, uh, me and my friend, I remember. Uh, I was quite a tomboy back then. And we um, was climbing up a tree and the tree branch snapped. We both fell in Red River, all in our new clothes. My mum went mad. So uh, all great fun, though. Um, but childhood memories there and then now to go back as being an elderly woman now and being able to paint things of of from down there in whatever way that I fancy um it's just great um and then yeah so I was telling you as well I bought this puppy another German Shepherd um to go along with Diesel um it's going well at the moment <laughs> at the moment hard work um, but by the end of the year, hopefully, she'll be out and down Red River with me and things. One, I'll be feeling a lot safer. Two, it will be nice. It's nice for Diesel because, obviously, uh, to have a friend uh, after losing Fly. And uh, obviously, it's nice for us all. So, uh, yeah, I'll um, I'll show you uh, at some point and, uh, yeah. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you all soon. Uh, remember, you can pop over to my Facebook page if you want to. If you want to show me some of your abstract work or any work that you want that you've done. Um, it's called uh, For the Love of Art uh, with Susan Priest. And if you go over there and then, then I'll accept you. It's a private group now. I think there's only about 62, 63 members there. So you can go over and... Have some fun. Post some of your stuff. All right. Um, you can also find me on Instagram as well and uh, Facebook. So. so here we are. Look, I'm adding the white now, but using it with all different kinds of um, things, really. Use my brush, use my fingers, use the palette knife. And then I brought some over to the bench as well and worked on them like that, using the roller here and the edge of the palette knife and things like that. So you can see how it's it suddenly just changed the pictures, even just by adding the white. Um, I'm trying to create more space, so I thought it was important to go in with some white at this point. But don't forget, I'm not going to be leaving those white now. Um, I'll be going over with another layer, so that will be good. And then um, I'll be able to um, add more marks and things on top. But some in some areas, I might want to leave the space of, of white, um, to, you know. So, uh, yeah, I'm quite pleased with these so far. And they're ready for the next layer and bit. I'm just showing you a little bit here. Excuse the sunlight shining through the window there. But you can use your own imagination here to see what you want to see. But the colours are there and it's good and the marks are there. And then once everything's dry, I'll be going in with some more marks. So here's a little bit more. Now this time adding some splatters. I was also trying to do this without getting it on the walls to try and practice good um, control um, with them because of different angles that I know that I can use and it, it's good. Um, I've got a baby wipe in, in my pocket as well, just in case it did go on there, that would wipe it straight off. But um, because this is like a Santex wall, um, so yeah. So um, I went all the way along, just adding them where I thought that I that they needed it, really. Uh, you have to excuse how I'm uh, dressed because I'm all uh, wrapped up warm. It's still quite chilly up there in, in that uh, attic uh, studio. And um, um, I did have to put a cover over the, the bottom just in case I did flick any at the bottom. But yeah, so I just carried on and continued on and just dipping it in and just going across and really enjoyed doing that. It was quite fun. It was definitely relaxing. <laughs> so moving on now, it's a little bit closer. This one on the end is my favourite one, actually. Uh, and then this one, this one that I've definitely needed to create a lot of space in that one. Uh, this one's got more of a misty sort of a space to it. And this one's got a bit of a grain that was used by using the roller and the white stencil. 
and then this one was just like a bit of a smear with my fingers so it gives me a bit of a foggy look and you can see them from a distance of what I'm talking about you can see how the white's made a lot of difference so it has suddenly given it a lot of area and no two sizes are the same you know no two areas are the same no two marks are the same so here I'm using a, a bit of a closer up using this like um using the uh, i always want them to call them uh, spatulas but they're not the palette knives uh this wasn't easy because i was trying to film with one hand and uh, and uh, paint with the other which was ridiculously silly to do really but uh, again all about making marks and not being too precious and things like that and spread them across and then moved on but if you notice that all the marks are different they're all different on the um, black and white, so I needed to ha create more um, space up in the top left hand corner. And um, that is what I, you know, I, I, I wanted to do that just by using marks and um, just, just by using the palette knife there. And it I got the effect that I was after. Needed just a little bit more. And then I found that the side of the side of the palette knife was really lovely it, it, you know it, it that felt nice too and then when you run out of paint you could scratch back through the wet paint as well and then i added that lovely swirl that i've uh, recently been doing in my mark making and i enjoyed that on the next one i just wanted to go down because this looked like a tree um down one side to create a bit of light and then to move that across the good thing about a palette knife is that um, if you put the paint on it and then use it and pull it across, it um, rather than brushing it across like I am doing, it gives it like an effect of light that no other mark can make. Um, you know, you'd have to use a big trowel to get that same mark. Um, yeah, so smudging this um, now with my finger again, giving it uh, a little bit more light and when I stood back there I could think mm, if I had a bit more white to that area I, I think that that would look nice too so that's what I did just use my finger and then you stand back again and you see different things when you stand back yeah and that gave it just what I wanted it to give it so yeah very enjoyable part that yes so then continuing on so this little tiny painting, this one on the end here is my favourite so far. So, okay then, talk to you all soon. Bye.